I have myself interviewed the Nigerians. I've had meetings with them for information. It's not just one-sided. Even before we met the Go authorities, we met the, the Nigerians, to know what actually determined what transpired. And their opinion, not just the opinion, their conviction was that they didn't, couldn't have reacted the way they reacted. If within 24 hours, investigation started, their main grievance from what they conveyed to us was that more than 48 hours after a gruesome murder, no arrests were made. That's number one. Number two, they are late when they showed us some evidence that not just that the police did not react. They said now when they reacted, instead of arresting those who were behind the murder, they now became the victims themselves. There was mass arrest of the Nigerians. Not just mass arrest. In addition to the mass arrest, there were also eviction from their houses and premises. And they felt they were being targeted. We have looked over the whole thing, interviewed everybody, and the police and authorities have assured us they were not being targeted. Mm. There was nothing like that. Mm. And I should go with assurance mm. given to me by the local authorities they were Nigerians not being targeted. Uh, now that I'm here, that's one of the reasons why I'm here. It con considering the same, uh, same point that you are making, yes. uh, when those emotions were flying high, yeah. Chief Minister made a very valid. And the media didn't help matters either, mind you. Mm. The media didn't. So you're, also play. you're blaming the media also for this? No, the media didn't because the things we are reading, even even you know, we are we are also inciting. Yes. You could see on some newspapers, even those that we told, look, we're investigating. They say, who is Nigeria? Such things. Mm. They do not help in situations like this. Mm. And that's why some of us, even after the initial that's media not, something, that's not the way diplomacy works. It wasn't helped yet. So we said no. We will conduct this thing on the pages, on the media, then television and media, we are going to incite people with the ball. So we decided to lie low. Mm. So, but we were communicating actually behind the scenes with both external affairs and convey a message through them to the go authorities. Uh, and like I said, yeah, they are doing something. And like now, mm. they have almost been arrested. Mm. Almost people involved. Yes. And you now, you see, you are now building the confidence, restoring the confidence, mm. and the mistrust. Now things are generated. moving ahead. Now things ahead. are moving And ahead. that's why we are here, and we're happy about it. Uh, one point that Chief Minister made, uh, very valid point, it's, I, I am not saying it is only Chief Minister who made the point, yes. but it was maybe a sentiment of every Govan and every Indian, yes. that if uh, those Indians staying in Nigeria, yes. were settled in Nigeria, yes. if they would have reacted in the same manner in Nigeria, yes. would you have liked seeing some Indians coming on the streets, blocking the street and creating that whole ruckus? Would you have appreciated it, even if it is a reaction? That was a sentiment of every Indian after seeing those visuals. Okay. Yeah. You see, the laws do vary. I'm not saying that your laws are different from ours. We, we inherited the same British uh, legacy, legal system. You are aware of that. We do have our laws. But when people are driven to some extent, you know, to that extreme extent, usually, there is restraint. You understand? I told, in fact, when also some people ask me, um, since also, you are alleging that some Indians also have expired documents living in Nigeria, drive them away. My reaction was, and I, made, and I insist on that, I say we have reacted more humanly. We have our own system. We will not go about are they evicting them, or you understand, or even now, patriotic against those who already are grieved. Mm -hmm. We will not do that. As, of, as I'm talking to you, the Nigerian immigration does not go about evicting people from their houses. We don't do that. Usually, we adopt a more human approach, and that's what I said. So the issue of whether we have reacted like that or not, well, it's secondary. But it depends on the way you feel on a particular issue. This is an extraordinary situation. And I can tell you, I have not had, we have not had that kind of experience. So it would be hypothet hypothetical for me to ask me, would they have reacted like that? As at the moment. No, would you have liked experience? such kind of a reaction? No, would you, you have liked such kind of reaction no, from Indians it hasn't in happened. Nigeria? It hasn't happened. You're asking me a hypothetical question. Yes. It's very hypothetical. Yeah, absolutely. That's it's a hypothetical exactly. question. And I don't indulge in hypothetical, in hypothetical questions mm. and answers. Mm. It has not happened before. So I cannot say what will happen if it, it happens, because mm. it has not happened. For more than 33 years I've been in the service, I haven't had the kind of experience. And that is why it baffled many of us. And that's why it's also difficult for me to answer your question. Okay. Uh, police investigation also states one very crucial fact. And the fact is this whole incident happened out of the drugs rivalry, the narcotics trade rivalry. Absolutely. Yeah. And I don't know. That's what, I'm that's hearing what, that's what the so. police investigation reveals, that yes. there were these local boys yes. and there was uh, this group of Nigerians. Yes. And the whole tussle started because of the drugs rivalry. Does that worry you? For as a Goan, as a Goan, as an Indian, seeing our own boys 
getting involved into narcotics trade definitely worries me. Seeing your boys coming to Goa and getting involved into such kind of activities, does that worry you? This should worry every parent, it should worry every citizen, it should worry any serious responsible person, especially the issue of narcotics, which destroys communities, destroys societies, destroys countries. But I want to tell you something. In Nigeria, we don't deal on drugs. I don't even know what drugs look like. I've never seen any, except on television. <laughs> so it should, it's, it's, it's worrisome. Hmm. But the point is this. Were there drugs before or not? The impression I'm getting, information I'm getting, yes, as you're affirming it, that the natives were also dealing on drugs. Absolutely. And of course, they came. I'm saying there are, there are both sides to the coin. Absolutely. Yes. How do we handle the problem? Yes. Is to deal with those others involved, whether they're Nigerians or Goans or Indians. If you do that, you find out, you remove the perception of high indebtedness and discrimination against any particular people. But the report we got and the information we got, even when I made Nigerians yesterday, is that even when two people are involved in crime, both Indians and all, that the police and law enforcement just go after the Nigerians and leave the Indians that are involved in the same drug with them. If you address the issue fundamentally by eliminating the causes, either from Nigeria or Goa, we won't be here talking about it. Apparently because the application of law was one more, more sided. That meant also to have that misperception in idea, which said it was mistrust. And I think that's your, also what is there. Your but as, as far as I'm concerned, the embassy is concerned, until the Goa thing, we've not got any report. Perhaps we would have, we wouldn't have gotten to the situation where we were. If, for instance, the Go authorities had reported to us, Nigerians here were involved in drug before the incident, I would have asked my officers immediately to come and investigate and find those involved. It wouldn't have maybe led to the point. What you have, what you but the point is this whether Nigerians or Indians are involved, if it is true Nigerians are involved in drug, that is condemnable. It is wrong. But please, we can't solve the problem by targeting or persecuting, arresting one side. Both sides should be arrested. So you are primarily saying that you don't mind Indian authorities. Uh, to arrest Nigerians involved in narcotics Please, trade, anybody, but arrest Indians too. Drugs, excuse me, not just only drugs. Yes. Any Nigerian found not to be obeying the laws, norms, and regulations wherever they are, the host community, should of course be held accountable. But do not but discriminate. No, they shouldn't discriminate. Yes. What I'm saying is that if people commit crime, their nationality is irrelevant. They are constituting breach of law and order in any community. So whether Indians or Nigerians, they should be arrested. Mm. The only thing is that you need that clear-cut assurance that it will not be only Nigerians who will be taken to the task and well, Indians involved in the same crime. The same crime should be arrested. Should be arrested. Yeah, but the information we are getting is that only Nigerians are being targeted. Mm -hmm. That's the information we got. And it is very worrying. But both happily, fortunately this morning, the GGO police and the chief minister said they were arrested. well concerned yes. Yes. in the law and order of the place, regardless, especially the DIG, I mm -hmm. showed us. Yeah that they are interested in keeping law and order, regardless of where you come from. Mm. And we want to see that in action. One first assurance that you have received from the Goa government is regarding the arrest that they have made in the Yes, process. we were we sure. There is a first that step. Yeah. That is the first step towards rebuilding yes, the confidence. Uh, second issue is regarding the Indians in Nigeria. Yeah. And this whole terminology of Goa crisis created very angry reactions back in Nigeria also. Yeah. Uh, a straightforward question. What about the safety of Indians in Nigeria post this episode? Can you unequivocally assure entire Indian community in Nigeria that you are safe? Indians in Nigeria have been very safe. Even as I'm talking to you, they are safe. We have Indians in almost all institutions, in all sectors of our economy, including even street vending. Unlike here, where Nigerians can't even establish basic businesses, even on their hair salon or restaurants. If you go most recently, you will see Indian cuisine, Indian menu, Indian, they're all the kinds of businesses that have been enjoying Nigeria. What worried us at the height of the incident was the obsession with Indian welfare in Nigeria than with a young gentleman who was murdered on the street. That was what happened. Indians have never felt unsafe. Please, this morning, even as we were coming yesterday, a lot of Goans who have very huge business in Nigeria approach us. We are going to meet some after, even before this, we live here. They are doing British business, they are doing their businesses. We have never hurt them. They have been doing their businesses. But what hurt us at the height of the crisis was that the media and others were more interested 
you know, in the welfare, they were obsessed with the welfare of India, and then there were gentlemen who was killed on the street. Who could have been your brother or mine? You are saying the, re the reaction of Nigerians caught more attention than the brutal murder. No, I'm saying the media reaction and the obsession with the welfare of Was on India the reaction than the cause? No, the, 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 the reaction initially, at uh, the point of the thing was, the media were more obsessed with the welfare of Indian citizens and the man who was murdered on the street. Mm. And we felt we were insulted. Because we thought they should have elicited more sensitivity, more concern and sympathy than they were welfare. When somebody dies, not even an animal, a human being was caught in the street, we feel obsessed to see how pleasing the family, the feeling of a nation, of the country can be assuaged rather than the welfare of the other side. That's what happened. What about the diplomatic relations now after your Goa visit? Uh, have you gathered enough confidence to go back and tell your nation that all is well? I started by telling you that the meetings were very positive and constructive. I'm reassured, at least. The authorities assured us, this, everybody, both sides, you do everything possible that this does not allow to repeat itself. And we're doing that. As long as this is being done and we receive assurances and see it in action, evidence, in contrary evidence, that some of the things we are doing in the meeting are done, why not? We we'll move ahead and don't allow, as I said, the crisis to hold our two nations to ransom. That's all I'm here. Uh, last question. Uh, as far as those Nigerians, as you said, you, who might have expired the visas or who are staying illegally, how will embassy look at this issue and help Indian administration in dealing with it? We, we have already agreed on methodologies and mechanisms to solve that. I have an immigration officer with me here who has been working. As soon as we get back, we agree that we have to have the list. As soon as we have a comprehensive list, and especially, please, in this kind of situation, there is a ten, maybe 10 days of temptation even to hold those. Even after the crisis, we have reports, including a, a Nigerian, an, an Indian married to Nigerian, who approached us crying that her husband was an innocent passerby and was arrested in the heat of the crisis. All these things we have looked into comprehensively and have brought them to the attention authorities and have agreed to look into them. As soon as we address these issues, we should be back to our normal no. for the relations. Nothing should be, be an obstacle to us again. And we're very happy about it. Uh, on a lighter note, uh, this, I think this is your first visit to Goa. Yeah. And uh, many of the Goans also know and feel that once even Nigerians come here, yeah. they like to stay here. Yeah, they like, like as, this state. As as what is your, <laughs> what is your, your first hand experience of Goa? Did you like this state? I, I wish I could have stayed long. It's a beautiful place. I think it's one of the best places. I was teasing uh, my friends who facilitated this visit. That uh, perhaps some of us would have preferred to migrate to this place and rest. It's a beautiful place and beautiful weather. You can see us coming and cheering. When I, when I was coming, I was wearing a sweater. Right now, I'm using air conditioner here, which I cannot use in Delhi at least. So the weather is welcoming and it's a beautiful place. With all your beautiful, you know, sea scenery and all that, it's beautiful. Thank you. I, I just wish that the uh, hospitality extends back to Delhi and the diplomatic relations between both the countries stay as good as they were before this incident. So thanks a Thank lot you, for talking to us. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.